The president has just announced another round of tariffs on Chinese goods, 10% um, tariffs on another $200 billion. It includes furniture. Um, this must be something that is of a concern to Crate and Barrel. It is. And Firstly, what I would say is I'm incredibly proud of Crate and Barrel's history in this. I mean, we source from 100 artisans across 42 countries, and we have an incredible tradition of, you know, finding people who produce very unique products in, you know, sometimes in remote villages in Kerala. And somehow the, the discussion has gone to the idea that everything that's produced um, in some of these markets is, is mass produced or industrialized. That simply isn't true. And so, it is a shame and it is a disappointment to us that furniture was included in, in the list. Um, however, we will continue to work with our vendors on how we mitigate that for customers. We'll also, uh, we're very lucky in that we have a very diversified global supplier base. About 20% of our goods come from China, but 20% come from India, 10% from Vietnam. So will you have to shift where you source from? At this stage, we don't anticipate that. Should the second round go into effect, then obviously that will become something we'll think about. But what's interesting about that discussion is it won't shift back to the US necessarily. I mean, other than upholstery, where we have a great uh, manufacturing base in the US, some of those products would be very difficult to manufacture domestically. So in reality, it'll move to another Asian market or potentially Europe. You might have to shift your supply chains or look at different sourcing for products. How will it affect the Crate and Barrel customer back here? Do you envisage having to raise prices? Not at this stage. We've looked at it quite carefully because we've had a, a month or two to do so. I, I hope not, and I, at this stage I don't anticipate that we will. It does really depend on the 25% um, that's threatened to come into effect in January and, and how that uh, plays out in the marketplace. But at this stage, I expect us to be able to either work with our vendors or consider alternative sources. Is the uncertainty something that is actually more of a concern than the tariffs, them than the tariffs themselves? Yes, and I mean, international sourcing is, a, is difficult, you know, to, to do what I just described, something, okay, we've been doing it for, you know, more than 50 years, but the reality is it's difficult to ensure that you're doing it ethically, that you're doing it sustainably, that you're working with factories uh, where you have real partnership and just any kind of disruption and shift in that creates a huge amount of work that needs to go into creating uh, those relationships and vetting those factories and developing those products together. So it's, it's not, in our case, as simple as, you know, moving manufacturing from one manufacturing base to another manufacturing base. So I don't have the, I'm not a publicly traded company, so I don't necessarily have the same uncertainty in terms of managing the market, but certainly it creates a lot of work and disruption in, in our internal organization. Are you surprised that this has been precipitated by the business president? I can't really comment on that. I, I mean, I understand uh, what the agenda is. I, I don't know whether this will be successful in achieving it, but it seems to have a much wider spread impact than I would have expected. Let's talk a little bit about um, the US consumer. We hear a lot from the president about how well the economy is doing. We're certainly seeing um, strong growth here in the US. That's also meant wages are starting to go up. It's also meant that uh, unemployment has fallen to a record low. Is that, so how does that impact your business? A, from the point um, the perspective of the customer, are they willing to spend more? And B, does it make it a little bit more difficult for you to hire and retain associates here at Crate and Barrel? Yeah, so let me take the first part. I mean, clearly the confidence is at the highest level we've seen for many years, and we do see that translate in our customer demand and growth, and that's a very positive trend for us. The second part of your question around associates, yes, we do see it becoming more competitive to recruit associates. We're lucky that we as a brand have strong values and have had longevity in our store base. Um, over seven years is our average tenure, which is unusual for retail. And I think that's because, um, thankfully, my associates are extremely committed to the Crane and Barrel brand and the experience of working here. 
Do you find that you are going to have to raise wages now that uh, the labour market is that much tighter? We have done selectively in certain markets. I mean, at the moment, that, that trend seems to be city by city, location by location, and where relevant, of course, we will remain competitive. Where have you um, had to raise wages? I couldn't tell you the exact cities, but Seattle obviously being one of them. I mean, a lot of them tend to be in California, where the minimum wage legislation has moved faster. But, but selectively, I mean, you know, we're starting to see Texas uh, rise in terms of growth rates. So it's not always the places that you would expect.